Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Anatomy and let's look at skull normas today. Uh, so the norma that we'll be seeing today is norma verticalis. As you all know the skull normas are the different views by which we study the skull and there are five different normas. We have a norma frontalis whereby we view the skull from the front. We have a norma verticalis whereby we view it from the top a norma lateralis where we use we view it from the sides a norma occipitalis and then we have a norma basalis whereby we study the skull from the base from below so today we'll be looking at the norma verticalis we'll be studying this norma under the bones forming it the sutures and the other features so let's first look at the bones which form the norma verticalis before that, let's orient ourselves as to what is the anterior and the posterior aspect. So on top, we have the anterior or frontal aspect. And below that, we have the posterior or the occipital aspect. And we have the two lateral aspects also. The norma verticalis, the bones forming the norma verticalis are the frontal bone, which is at the top. We have the right and the left parietal bones. We have the occipital bone and then we have to look at the suture. So there are basically four bones forming the norma verticalis, the frontal, the two parietal bones and the occipital bone. Let's look at the sutures forming the norma verticalis. The main suture, the first suture that we see is the coronal suture. So that is between the frontalis or the frontal bone in front and the two parietal bones behind. The next suture here is the sagittal suture which is seen between the two parietal bones and the last one is the lambdoid suture which is seen between the two parietal bones and the occipital bone. What are the other features of norma verticalis? Uh, the meeting point of the coronal and the sagittal sutures is known as the bregma and the meeting point of the coronal sagittal sorry the sagittal and the lambdoid sutures is the lambda so these are the two major points. Apart from that, we have two lateral eminences, which are the parietal eminences on either side over here. And then uh, a little bit posteriorly on either side of the sagittal suture, closer to the lambda, we have what are called the parietal foraminae, which are two in number. And through the parietal foraminae, we have the passage of the emissary veins. Uh, there are a few special features characteristic of the fetal skull in the norma verticalis. Let's look at them now. We will first identify the metopic suture which is there on top. And this metopic suture is seen to exist only in fetal skulls or immature skulls. And that is because the two frontal bones are still present as two separate halves in the fetal skull. In the adult, they have fused together and we don't have a metopic suture. So the metopic suture is a specific feature of the fetal skull. Then we have the future coronal suture between the frontal and the parietal bones and we have the future sagittal suture between the two parietal bones. Another important landmark of the fetal skull in the norma verticalis is this, the anterior fontanelle as you can see over there. It's a meeting point of the metopic, the coronal and the sagittal sutures. It becomes the bregma in the adult. And another important question that a very really popular question asked is when does it close? So the anterior fontanelle is seen to close at one and a half years that is around 18 months. And another question that is asked is what is its applied anatomy or the clinical importance of the anterior fontanelle? So when that question comes you have to write these four points. Any two of them would do. Uh, the most important one is age determination of the child. So if the anterior fontanelle is still easily palpable, we know that the child is still less than one and a half years old or 18 months old. Clinically, the anterior fontanelle is used to determine whether the child is suffering from either increased intracranial pressure, in which case the fontanelle will be bulging upwards, or decreased intracranial pressure as in dehydration, in which case the fontanelle will be pressed down. And in such cases, the anterior fontanelle can be used for easy access for IV or uh, fluid infusion or drug infusion because it, below it we have the superior sagittal sinus. So these are the important features of the norma verticalis. Stay tuned for another norma in the coming weeks. Thank you so much.